Salutations, dear viewer! Yes, that's right! Back at it again for... Episode 16, could it be, of Monkey and Biggs 365. I'm your host, Biggs. I'm your other host, Monkey. And we're... A gay couple. I was going to say, you're, you're, fairly got, you're fairy godparents. Oh, well, that works too. I feel like that's something we used to do all the time, was the and we're, and then you say nothing. Yeah. It seems like a monkey, classic monkey and Biggs bit. <laughs> <laughs> this set up with no payoff. <laughs> Every week. There's that uh, one part of improv class I just didn't quite take hold to. <laughs> you skipped like the, the yes first and. class? <laughs> <laughs> the yes and part. Yeah. Basically like the only thing you have to remember from improv. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the building block at the very base of improv. Well, Biggs, as an empathetic man, I do believe in second chances and redemption. So I'm going to give you a second shot at this. The next five words you say will be the title of this episode. Don't fuck it up. This is the title. Cool. Should I call <laughs> Aggie and just have him do it? <laughs> and call him at work? <laughs> Yeah, you uh, could have yeah, said rip OJ, that. he's playing the knife game with Rusty in heaven, like Vale just said. That That's been not much five better. words, retard. <laughs> That's not five words, retard. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah. Mm, we're gay, rip OJ. No, that's that's only four, four words, retard. <laughs> just add retard to everything. Uh, Biggs. I'm not going to necessarily put this on the pathetic list, but this is something I found pathetic this week. Uh, when you invite friends to go see a movie with Aggie on 420 and they leave you on red on Snapchat and never reply, has that ever happened to you? Uh, probably twice. Because <laughs> it sure happened to me. In my defense, I'm still waiting uh, for a response. You're oh else. you're that guy. Oh, I gotta check with the wife. Oh, uh, uh, I really want to go see the People's Joker with you and Eggie, <laughs> but I gotta check with the old lady. Huh, oh, Biggs? She she's probably wanting to do it too, but I just don't know. Like, she's the one that keeps track of scheduling of like when we have stuff going on. I don't keep any of that in my calendar, <laughs> so I'm like, hey, can you check the calendar and see if we have anything on the twentieth? Well, she's the Bigs like, yeah. I know would always have four twenty available for various activities. I am the biggest pothead in our, our hometown, apparently, according to some. Was that your reputation, according to who? <laughs> uh, that was according to Cobb's mom, remember? What? <laughs> you no. don't remember this? She thought so, Biggs was the biggest pothead in town. So, uh, not to go too far out in the weeds in the story, but... Go for it. We got an hour short, to fill. Go for it. Long story short, um, we borrowed her van to go to a concert... <laughs> Wait, and did she know you were borrowing it? Is this your yes. word of stealing? Yes. Okay. So we borrowed her van <clears throat> to go on this like small road trip to a concert. It wasn't that far, maybe like an hour. But uh, we had used a blanket because it was like an outdoor venue. So we used a blanket for the people that we were with to sit on. And when they wrapped up the blanket and threw it back in the van, apparently it was like grass and leaves stuck in it. So when she got her van back, she like saw this blanket with a bunch of green stuff, which you'd think she would just see as grass. <laughs> but apparently she thought it was weed. And she's like, mm. oh, it has to be weed because you were with Biggs. And he's like, what? <laughs> she's like, isn't he like a huge pothead? I'm like, what how, are you talking about? How wasteful. <laughs> like just to have loose fucking weed spilled. Like I would be fucking scrounging around trying to find every last little bud. Okay, who's wasting weed like that? That that shit adds up. Okay, it's not that's, very heavy, but it's expensive. That's true. Yup has a point. I did buy that little pot in Colorado. Yeah, that is currently on my. <laughs> uh, it's in the living room up on the bookshelf, right next to that picture of uh, the old man from Nathan for You finding Francis, who people assume is like a relative that I have framed in my home. It's funny but because no. that's such like a such like a common joke for people to do, like to bring somebody back something like that. But I just thought it was so funny for some reason because I had told you I was going to bring you back pot. <laughs> and then I brought you that back. 
Hey, <laughs> my live reaction is on this show. Is people can go find it. Big's bot, a little pot in Colorado is the name of the episode. If you want to see a man like dejected and pure turmoil flashing across a man's face, you can see me <laughs> when I open this present and there's no marijuana inside. I was like, I was looking in the pot, like, is the weed in there? But no, <laughs> it was empty, just like my soul. If I remember right, you like were looking inside it for a minute, and then you like it took you a minute to look at the front. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, it. I'm sure I was that stupid that when I opened something literally that is a pot, I was confused. I'm sure that's what happened, Biggs. Well, no, the fact that it said it on there was a little what pot made you have the reaction. Yeah, yeah. Well, Biggs. So we don't have an answer if you're going to join me and Aggie on 420 to go see the People's Joker. Is that what you're telling me? You'll know before tomorrow. I'll I'll check the calendar myself tonight, I guess. Okay. Well, Aggie will be here at my house next week, so he'll be our special guest for Mumkin Big 17 out of 365. Can we do the math on that? How how many more of these do we have? Like there can't be more than like 20 more episodes, right? We're pretty close to 365 now, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, in terms of... Uh, with, with 365 minus 16. Probably about five left. Hey, that's our Iowa education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Big, should we... I keep saying on this show next week we're going to play Gaspionage, like the Jackbox game where the whole audience can get on their phone and play along and join us. But then I keep thinking of other things I want to talk about <laughs> instead. So I think we're bringing back the pathetic list again. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, probably the first one would be, uh, you know, hosts who promise uh, <laughs> Jackbox night with their fans uh -oh. and then <laughs> pull uh -oh. out last second. Hmm. Uh, should we throw that in the, <laughs> the poll real quick? Or... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, if you're going to bring that in, bring it in because I've got a lot. So maybe I should go first uh, in, in a formal way. Sure, go for it. Okay, Biggs. This is a big one. And by big, I mean 4.8. You hear about this, Biggs? New York City was hit with an earthquake. I, I heard about it. I don't know much about it, though. Well, there's not much to know. But evidently, it was the, the most important event in uh, East Coast history. Because every, every post I saw for days in my fucking internet algorithms of various websites was, Oh my God, can you believe it? New York City hit by a magnitude 4.8 earthquake. Oh, my God. Oh, the carnage and destruction. Biggs, I'm bringing on to the pathetic list. Non-lethal earthquakes. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you fucking kidding me? You expect me to give a fuck? Nobody okay. died. But, Zero but New Yorkers were killed. I only want to hear a story about an earthquake in New York City if it's a 9-11 times 100 event. We're talking nine, 911,000 <laughs> is what it should have been. Zero buildings collapsed. Zero people died. One guy's Funko Pop collection, uh-oh, fell off the shelf. Heaven forbid, fucking Cobb and his fucking Funko Pops. <laughs> But so no New Yorkers died. Uh, have they experienced something like this before? Uh, well, I looked it up, and it turns out there are 400 earthquakes globally per day that cause equal damage, which is zero. This is basically <laughs> a local weather news report that they expected every person on the globe to give a fuck about. It'd be like if, if there was a thunderstorm here in Iowa, if we sincerely <laughs> expected everybody to give a fuck. Some tornadoes or something roll through town and we have to like... That would at least cause the... damage. Like, if you are playing Pokemon and you use the attack magnitude and it says magnitude four, you are pissed because that's <laughs> weak as fuck and it won't kill anything. Why do... The, is there, there... There is no more concentrated... A hive of scum and main character syndrome than a New York City. These people are egotistical fucking bastards. You only want to live in New York if you think you're the main character of fucking life. And the fact that this natural disaster killed none of those people is fucking pathetic. Go ahead. Well, you got to look at it from their perspective, you know? Nothing like this has probably happened in recent history. So they're all like kind of shocked and surprised and... 
Like, oh no, some stuff fell off and, you know, what if this happens again and it's worse? I hope it does. I only want to hear about it if something bad happens. Biggs, Biggs, when I say these words, what comes to your mind? World Trade Center Building 7. Thermite. According to the, (laughs) in case you don't know, folks, in New York City, in Manhattan on 9-11, it wasn't just the Twin Towers that fell. There is a third building, World Trade Center 7. That building, according to the official report that Netanyahu and George W. Bush expect us to believe, that building collapsed in its entirety from nothing. Literally nothing is more powerful than this (laughs) earthquake. Literally nothing. But it was on fire, wasn't it? Didn't they no! Say, oh, it caught on fire. It so just it collapsed, down. and they expected us to not notice, Biggs. This earthquake was weaker than literally nothing. That's fucking pathetic. I don't know. Losing some pops can be uh, pretty traumatizing to some. There's like a, <laughs> a pop stock any. market. <laughs> Maybe it dented the box, and it's not worth it. Like worth anything anymore. <laughs> His Funko Pop collection lost like $10 in value. And the entire world needed to hear about this. Like, we give a fuck. Exactly. Okay, I I think that's it. I I want, if if I'm going to hear about the local weather in New York, just make sure it's a fucking massacre of people. Otherwise, trust us, nobody else in the world gives a fuck about what's happening in your shitty city. That reminds me of uh, some family I have out in New Jersey, and any time it snows there, they have to tell us about it and how bad <laughs> it is and how snowed in they are and this and that. And it's like, dude, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> you had some snow. Good for you. Yeah, these people who they think that they're so important and so tough, they would not survive a day living anywhere in the Midwest. And You don't see us bitching and tweeting about it nonstop. Yeah. So, should I? What should I put exactly on the list? Because I'm thinking it should be non-lethal earthquakes. Because by definition, it's pathetic. Like if pathetic means weak, like a magnitude 4.8 earthquake is is literally the definition of pathetic. But is that is that the root of what we're calling pathetic here? I thought it would well, just I, be New Yorkers. I think New Yorkers <laughs> belong on the list, and they will have their day in the sun, Biggs. But but right now, I'm kind of just focused on the earthquake fine okay yeah okay so well, i'm gonna read these uh new member in the super chats as everybody's voting so uh, give me one second to do this poll non-lethal earthquakes you tell us if it's pathetic or not pathetic while he's doing that i'll read some super chats uh little tater for two dollars said 222 bigs videos on this channel watching erased right now are you watching like the the original one or like the new Netflix? I guess it's not new. It came out a few years ago. The Netflix adaptation one. Biggs, can you believe that there's 222 videos of you on this channel? I wonder if, if even Florian has you beat. I guess I could look. Because I do make playlists of all the most important characters so that people, you know, if people just want to watch Biggs, they can just watch Biggs in the playlist. So. Yep. Uh, member for one month. It says, one time a guy at a wedding told me he had a stack of his pop figures fall over on him while having sex, so it was probably important. <laughs> wow, and thank you for becoming a member again, uh, Mr. Yup. We are at 60 members on this channel. Uh, what, a, what a sight to behold. Uh, Biggs, wow, shockingly, you have Florian fucking beat. I guess when we, we did daily Let's Plays for a long time, so that probably helped inflate your number. But uh, the Biggs playlist has 223 videos, and the Florian playlist only has 158, which is shocking because wow. I feel like I've wasted way more than 158 hours talking to Florian. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, was it 2019 or 2020 where I basically like lived on your couch for a while and like we filmed every day. Yeah, something like that. That's what I would call the good times, Biggs. The good old days. The good old days. It looks like after 50 votes, non-lethal earthquakes are equally pathetic to me at 74 points. 
So tied with M- Monkey Jones and Florian, fuck non-lethal. Or- <laughs> uh, right when I ended it though, it dropped down to seventy-two. So I guess it beat me. Slightly more pathetic than Toot, at least. Uh, okay. So, little Tater, I think I I misspoke. So, damn it. Yes, you're you're watching like the the original, I guess you would say. I I was meaning. That one or the Netflix like uh, live action adaptation. So you're just watching the anime one, is what I was asking, I guess. Okay. I, uh, I was interested in watching the live action, but I'm kind of scared due to some of other uh, Netflix adaptations that they came out with. Well, Biggs, that's my entry number one. Uh, what would you like to bring in? The, something about co hosts or something? Shitty co hosts? What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would you even call that? Co-host that... I don't say, even remember what you were saying. Game. It was like, if you promise your viewers you're going to play a Jackbox okay. game and then pull out. Uh, I don't think pulling out is pathetic. It's how you create <laughs> life. Uh, Yup donated five bucks to say Trader's version of Dan Giesling is number one on the pathetic list for me. Uh, the disappointment list, for sure. For sure. I think the way he went out was not pathetic because uh, he threw that one bitch under the bus and I hated her, so good for him. Uh, is this a real entry, Biggs? A co-host who, who promised to play espionage <laughs> and lie. Because oh, I'll hear sure. you well, out. I'm not too well, sure that that's pathetic. I think it's kind of based to, you know, to do whatever you want every single day, regardless of any commitments or promises you've made. Is that, that not the most based way to live? That's fair. That is fair. We're not obligated to play Gespionage if we have better things to talk about. I agree. Purple Colonel is here in the chat pretending he likes Dan Giesling, but uh, he said that uh, CBS, uh, Viacom, Paramount has never made anything good ever. And I said, what about Survivor and Big Brother? And he scoffed and said he would never watch those. So I don't know why he's pretending to be a Dan Giesling fan. Hashtag disgusting. Hashtag purple kernel for the pathetic list. <laughs> and uh, Yup says, upvote video, measly few brudas, I go sleepy now. Well, Yup, I, I like the way you think. Have a nice, uh, sweet <laughs> dream. Uh, Biggs, what are you bringing in? Okay, so this I actually just saw right before I got on Discord to call you. Um, <laughs> it just seems so stupid to me. But it's definitely pathetic. So it was a a string of videos of people having like these really, uh, what would you call it? What they would call like cool moments or something with their customers. But it's barbers or salon people who ask their customers for (laughs) consent to to cut their hair. (laughs) I've seen videos of this. Yeah, that is funny. What? You're going to ask somebody that not only probably scheduled this, but drove, like took time out of their day to drive over there with the expectation to give you money to cut their hair. And you're going to be like, hey, I know you did all that, but like, am I allowed to? Can I? Do I have consent to do what you came here to pay me to do? Yeah. What is the plan if they say no? You just don't, <laughs> right. you don't cut the right. hair? Then why did they show up? Like the consent is is them walking through the door of the barbershop. <laughs> it's so dumb. I can't, like, I didn't think it was, I thought it was satire, but then I was, like, reading the comments of people, like, oh, it's so inspiring that they're doing this now. I'm so glad that they're doing that. Could the I comments think... also be satire bits? <laughs> yeah. Like, because there is a dead internet theory that 90% of what you read is written by AI. <laughs> I mean, that's possible, I guess. I hope I it's know. true, because that's a sad state of humanity where people hey, would praise this. Mrs. Biggs. Come here. Are we busy on 420? No. We're on stream. I don't know if you don't walk on camera. You can if you want. But uh, uh, Monkey wants to go see this transgender show or movie or something. Oh, she made. Oh my God! The the appearance of Mrs. Biggs. My God. She got scared. Uh, so he wants to go see this tranny movie on oh 420 with Eggy. <laughs> Do you want to watch it? She's invited. Well, no, she said, uh, are we not going with Toot? (laughs) (laughs) 
That's a no. Two would flake out. They would probably flake out, I guess. So, uh, yeah, movie with Mumkey and Eggy about transgender people. What's it called? The Transgender Joker The or People's something? Joker. The People's Joker. What do you think? Okay, yeah, we'll go. There's okay. your answer. Live on stream. <clears throat> uh, look forward to the Is It Kino on The People's Joker featuring me, Eggy, and Biggs. It's going to be a real hoot and holler. Uh, we'll get to these super chats in one sec. I want to uh, let Biggs finish his thoughts on this because, uh, you know, I, I would extend it to just people who ask for consent in general. Like I should be able to touch any woman at any time without asking, you know, would you agree? Or is it just for barbers? Sure. We can extend it out. Uh, this the is concept of think, consent. Do you think asking for consent is pathetic? She's walking away. She's hmm. shutting the door. Well, what about guys who, on a first date, ask, can I kiss you, rather than just kissing? Is that kind of the same idea? I don't think it's the same idea, because I feel like a date can go really bad, and it's kind of clear that the other person is not interested any longer. And I feel like, unless they're, like, you know, getting all up on you, it's probably best to, <laughs> to ask. I don't know. What if you're on a date with a barber? Well, then you definitely have to ask. They would ask you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to sit down at the table, ask for their consent to eat with them uh, or go to the movies with them or something like that. You have to ask consent to talk to them. I'm sure there's like a list of things. Okay. So is, is that it? Barbers who ask for consent. Let's, yeah, that let's sounds do it. right. Okay. See if you can find those super chats Unbelievable. Real quick. Uh, super chats. Let's see. Uh, Shubba for five dollars says, "Have you seen the Bone Chilling documentary of the year? Codex Pajit Two, best piece of third world Gonzo since Africa was Africa Audio. Truly black pilling." I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if the word Pajit is a racial slur or not, and it's too late to ask. I feel like, like I'm, I mean, I'm scared I to ask. Regardless. But what does it mean? Does it just mean like an Indian person? What does Pajit mean? I, I see no that all idea. the time, but it's only in like a racist Wojak context. It's never like, uh, look at these Pajits respecting women and shitting in the toilet. A uh, little tater for $2 said, binge 37 episodes of DM, last 10 episodes stunk. I assume you mean Death Note. It's got to be Death Note. What other show yeah. has 10 stinky episodes? <laughs> yeah. Basically, uh, a fourth of it just completely garbage. Uh, should that be uh, on the pathetic list? People who enjoy the final ten episodes <laughs> of Death Note. Man, I I talked to some people who gen like genuinely like those characters, and it just still doesn't make sense to me. Like, like you don't like Mello? Mello? How is Mello an enjoyable character? <laughs> Oh man, they're angsty and they take bites out of chocolate. Ooh, <laughs> such compelling character. Hey, hey, L ate candy all the time. Yeah, but that makes Mellow good at being a character. That's true. That's true. Oh, and Nier, he like squats down like L did, so he's a good character. Hey, Nier, too. Nier was okay. Okay, I, I got the the extra material, like the you know the special Death Note book that came out a few years ago with all the short stories and the new shit, and he, he's not bad. You know, he he's fine. He's no L. We, we just didn't get enough time to give a fuck about Nier. Sorry, I'm a, a smooth brain anime only watcher person. So if it's not in the anime, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, yeah you're right. You, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, Barbers who ask for consent currently has 79 pathetic points, Biggs, which is only two more pathetic than our audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear somebody argue why this is not pathetic. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> put in chat why you think it's not pathetic. I'm curious to see, uh, like, an, a legitimate defense for this. Yeah, and we'll be keeping our eyes peeled, so let us know in the in the chat. Uh, Biggs, I was not going to bring this one in this week. I was going to save this for later, but since you brought up barbers, I think I need to. Uh, you know, Biggs, we're not egocentric on this show like a New Yorker, okay? We're willing to put ourselves on the pathetic list. Yeah, most of the time we're bringing in things that annoy us personally, but sometimes I think it's it's safe for us to put things that reflect ourselves because we know how pathetic we are. 
So I mean, that is why we are on the list. <laughs> right. And that's why I'm going to bring in people who don't know how to get a haircut. And I'm talking about me. Because there's nothing I hate more than hair. I hate that I have to have hair. And I hate that there's an expectation of what hair should look like to look good. Uh, for a segment that we're going to do later on in this episode, I was flicking through some older episodes of Monkey and Biggs 365. And my hair is just always terrible, like always way too long and all over the place, unkempt and messy. I don't know. A chat seems to every once in a while, they're just like, you know, raving about your hair and how good it looks. So, Well, here's the problem is that I, I can recognize when I have a good hair day. So the next day I'll try to do the exact same thing to it and it will look like fucking shit. Like you cannot control it. Well, it just does problem. whatever it wants. That's the problem. You put in effort. Don't put in effort. I just try to, I, I feel like if I, if I do so, if I comb it this way and it looks fine, then the next day, if I do the exact same thing, it should look fine again. But sometimes it just like wants to dry differently out of the shower. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the times I actually try to like brush my hair and make it look nice. I get com like comments saying I, I look like I'm, what would you say? Like a greased up cartel member or something. But then other <laughs> days where I get out of the shower and just kind of let it flow and dry out however it wants. People are like, oh man, your hair looks great today. I'm like, dude, I literally did nothing with it. Like, and it's I, effort. That's what ruins it. Well, it's I, I like that idea of just don't give a fuck. Don't do anything to it and let it be whatever you want. But then, like, in the summer, it gets hot, and having all this damn hair is annoying. And what's also annoying is having to go get a haircut. And is it true people get haircuts, like, every six weeks on the dot? Yeah, people have it, like, scheduled with their, oh like, whatever God. barber they go to. Like, anytime I go and get my haircut, they're like, so do we want to, like, schedule one out six weeks? I'm like, no, I'll no. come back when I want to get it cut again. I might get a, a haircut <laughs> three or four times a year, depending on the year. Yeah, and maybe twice, sometimes maybe once for me. Like the past few years, I've gotten a cut like one time. Well, I wish I could be that way because when I go in and this is where the pathetic part comes. And I feel like such a fucking child and an idiot because I don't know what to tell the barber. Like I, I know I, I wrote down in my fucking notes app the, the one time I got a good haircut. I typed in exactly what they did. And I'll, I'll, I'll say it to him, oh, yeah, give this number with the whatever the fuck and this long with the scissors on top. It, it never looks good. Like, you just have to get lucky with the good barber. Maybe yeah. somebody who actually knows what they're doing and can sculpt my hair to match my big fat fucking face. I was going to say, like, I feel like getting haircuts and having them come out well, super dependent on who you go to. Because, like, there for a while I was just going to Great Clips and... I would get the same exact haircut forever, like when I used to have short hair. And every single time it was completely different. Like it was never the same haircut twice. And like you would think if you give exact measurements of what you want, it would be the same, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. So then I stopped going to Great Clips and uh, a friend of mine like worked at another salon. Um, kind of like where they rent the chairs, I guess, and they have their own customers. So I started going to her for a while and it was like, it looked the same every time and it looked nice. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I just got a, a flashback, a, a real brain blast. And I think I can actually defend barbers who ask for consent. Okay. Hear uh -oh. me out, Biggs. When it comes to touching you to cut your hair, retarded. They should not be asking for consent. Consent for talking to you? Well, th <laughs> that I wish they would just shut the fuck up because I never want to <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> the, the question people always want to know is what do you do for a living uh how about go fuck yourself i'm not gonna say i do podcasts i'm not gonna say i do youtube because that leads to more questions and i already don't want to talk to you so just leave me alone but something i do not like this new trend and maybe it's just now that i'm an adult i'm noticing it maybe this has been forever but now after your haircut barbers want to give you a fucking massage bigs does this happen to you what? <laughs> they, part of it is they want to like pull out like a fucking massage gun or maybe even use their hands and fucking give you a shoulder massage after your haircut. Where are you going for that? Sports clips. Love that. <laughs> fucking sports clips. <laughs> I'll go do that. That sounds great. And, no, I hate it because it's <laughs> awkward because they don't want to do it. 
No woman working as a $15 an hour barber wants to be fucking rubbing all these disgusting sports clips of customers. So why do they do it then? Is it like part of their policy that they have to do it for every customer? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Yes. What? And That's so I'm glad they so asked because I don't want it. So that is the only consent asking I accept from a barber. I don't want a fucking massage from you. That's what my girlfriend yeah. is for. God damn it. What? How would she <laughs> feel if she knew that this disgusting 45 year old fat woman was touching me all over? Huh? She'd probably not like it. Yeah, probably. Uh, is that going on the pathetic list too now? Getting a massage at your barber? I don't think it's pathetic. It's just like, <laughs> no, thank you. So what what was I putting on? Uh, people who don't know how to get haircuts? I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I guess so. And Biggs, let me know if this makes sense. I know sometimes barbers <clears throat> like it when you show them a photo of like a celebrity. Like, oh, here, give, give me the Jake Gyllenhaal and you hold up your little... Google image search. Could somebody in the audience, and this might be impossible, I don't know how computers work, you know, use utilizing either Photoshop or AI, can you send me an image of myself with a good haircut that I could show to the barber? Like, can, I'm asking literally anybody listening to this, if you can Photoshop me with a good haircut that I should get, I'll show it to my barber. Say, make me look like this guy. <laughs> Just hold a <laughs> photo of myself. Uh, okay, I'm going to make this poll. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's funny, because the last time I went to get my hair cut, um, Mrs. Biggs was saying, oh, you should get it done this way, and it'll look really good. And I had no idea, like, what she was describing to me. So she ended up, like, finding a picture of what it would look like and showed it to the barber, and... She's like, oh, you want like this? I'm like, yeah, sure. However that looks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that, but yeah, it, it turned out really nice. Uh, so I think showing pictures does help a lot if, if you have the right barber, like, and they're able to capture like whatever picture you're showing them. Should I stop going to sports clips? Should I start going Probably. to one of those? Because the only like fancy haircut for men place in town, you do have to schedule like 10 days in advance on their website. And I, for me, a haircut is always, okay, I'm sick of it. I'm just going to get it cut right now. Like, I never yeah, plan ahead yeah. to get one. That's, like, the only good thing with great clips is, like, if you look around, there's, like, 20 around us, and one of them is, like, within 10 minutes you can sit down and get it cut. Just right then, right there. Okay, we've yeah. got, ooh, people, people don't think that this is pathetic. I guess this is a relatable problem for people because only 38% said people who don't know how to get haircuts are pathetic. Yeah, and it's almost to half, which is usually where we cut it off, so. Mm -hmm. It looks like this one's going to end right around 40. Let's see where it lands. Uh, 41%. Okay. Biggs, did you even have another one today? Um, Not really, I guess. Um, I thought I did, but I forgot to write it down <clears throat> while we were talking about the other stuff. Uh, do you want to bring in co-hosts who lie to the audience? <laughs> sure, we'll bring it in for fluff. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and Robel, thank you for becoming a member of the Measly Few. Folks, let me tell you, if you become a member today, not only do you get early access <clears throat> to the new episode of Bazinga Boys, but there are some Is It Kino podcasts that the rest of these normies will not hear until fucking mid-May that you can listen to right now. Co-hosts who lie to the audience about playing Gaspionage next week. Pathetic or not? Apparently there was a cat sighting. I must have missed her. Homegirl Chai making an appearance. <clears throat> I tried putting your name into chat GBT and I got a strike. I didn't know ChatGPT was giving out strikes. That's interesting. Uh, th looks like this one might be the most pathetic thing on the list so far. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like they agree that it should be on the list. Then. I think they really want to play Gespionage. They must be disappointed. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I have one more worth doing before we go on to our next segment. Uh, yeah, I, this one won't take too long. I'll let them keep voting while we talk about this. 
Biggs, this uh, this might be controversial. I'm putting on <laughs> people who are angry at Quagmire from Family Guy like he's a real person. Have you seen this, Biggs? I haven't. <laughs> so Quagmire's character is that of a sexual deviant, and he's like a noted pedophile, rapist. Any sexual thing you could do, that's bad. Quagmire does it for the sake of comedy. And I saw on Twitter, somebody posted a clip, and it's like 50,000 people outraged. How could they air this? This is, I, I feel sick to my stomach. This is the most deplorable thing I've ever seen in my life. Are you even familiar with Family Guy, Biggs? To an extent. You're a big I, fan I, of Quagmire? You agree with what he does and how he treats people? He, he says giggity goo. That's pretty funny, right? <laughs> there is a clip, and evidently this was so controversial and outrageous that they edited it out of, like, the Hulu version. So this is, like, exclusively for the broadcast. And I was there. I'm an old school Family Guy head, okay? In 2008, whatever fucking year this episode aired, I was watching it live. And let me tell you, it was a very effective joke. And me at the age of 13, 14, whatever, thought that this was hysterical and very fucking funny. And the fact that people are, like, trying to get Glenn Quagmire as a character canceled over this is why I'm putting them on the list. The joke is... Uh, Biggs, are you familiar with how television works? Sure. So sometimes yeah. you're watching a TV show, <clears throat> and they'll have a little bumper at the bottom of the screen advertising what show is coming up next. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So there's a scene from Family Guy <laughs> where the family is just in the living room, and they're having an uncharacteristically serious, boring conversation. Like, they're not making jokes. It's like a full minute of just the family talking about the serious thing that happened earlier in the episode. <laughs> And, and at the bottom of the screen, there's a little Marge Simpson, and it says, watch The Simpsons up next on Fox. And Marge is, you know, the little bumper at the bottom, little advertisement. She's waving. And, and you don't think anything of it. At the time, this was a common thing. As far as I know, they're actually doing an advertisement for The Simpsons. This is not part of the Family Guy episode. Okay? It, it's like one of, it's this meta you know, narrative breaking thing that Family Guy is now famous for. Marge is waving, you know, come watch The Simpsons. But uh oh. <laughs> Glenn Quagmire, who is also a little tiny at the bottom, he runs in. He's part of the ad for The Simpsons now. He tackles Marge to the ground. It starts dragging and pulling on her. And uh, people are interpreting this as a horrible rape sexual assault. However, it then cuts to the Simpsons' house. We do not see anything that's happening. We only see the exterior of the house. And some piss-poor impressions of the Simpsons' characters are heard. And Marge says, Oh, Quagmire! Oh, that was the best sex I've ever had! You're way better than my homie! So for one, clearly not, not rape. She consented to this. She might have been resistant at first when he was tackling her. But as far as the joke is concerned, Marge consented and enjoyed this sex quite a bit. Then Homer Simpson walks in. He says, uh, Marge, what, what are you doing with Marge? And then we hear a shotgun. Uh-oh. Marge says, oh, you killed my homie. How could you? Shotgun. We hear Bart's voice. I caramba, dude. Shotgun. We hear the baby Simpson, Maggie, do hear little pacifier. <laughs> we hear another shotgun, but we don't know because Maggie Simpson famously was the one who shot Mr. Burns. So the implication here, this is like the real inception twist ending, the ambiguous ending. Did Quagmire shoot and kill the baby as well? Or did Maggie get revenge for her family? And as a child, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like, like <laughs> Quagmire interrupted an advertisement for a different show and then killed the whole family. <laughs> but the way they're talking about it on Twitter, it's like they aired a literal war crime. People are more angry about this joke in, in Family Guy 
than the genocide happening in Gaza. Like they would so, rather see that. So this is people getting mad like recently. I saw this three days ago. <laughs> what? <laughs> this this is the current <clears throat> Twitter discourse is that Glenn Quagmire raped Marge and that everybody involved with this joke and family guy should be canceled. But it's it was fucking funny. Yeah, there's no defense for that. That's so pathetic. <laughs> Like, if it came out that long ago, and it's not even on, like, the streaming sites, how are they so mad about it? Because somebody posted the clip to Twitter, and, you know, I guess it was too funny for them. <laughs> anyway, um, co-hosts who lie to their audience about playing Gaspionage next week has uh, 77 pathetic points right now. Congrats, you left it up long enough to where it uh, didn't go to the top. Okay. Uh, so somebody remember that because I got to type in this new one. Um, there's people who are angry at Quagmire from Family Guy. Okay, I got to type all that in while you read something, Biggs. Just name it like Twitter Quagmire Boycotters or something. No, I want to type people who are <clears throat> angry at Quagmire from Family Guy as if he's a real person. It needs to be very specific. <laughs> Pathetic or not. Anyway, I need to add this, uh, uh, this co-host one to the list. Yep, for one ninety nine set purple kernel doing a competing stream is pathetic. Uh yeah, I guess so. He got upset that I called him out for Dan Giesling, so now he's trying to steal our viewers, huh? What was the number on this? Seventy something? Seventy seven. Wow, it's tied with our audience, Christ is King Cry Babies, and re I'm gonna put it uh, right above me because I think it this might be a pseudo monkey. Anyway. Uh that's good enough. I'll fix that later. And uh, oh, I'm glad people are on my side. 85% currently agree that people angry at Quagmire from Family Guy as if he's a real person are pathetic. Thank God. Yeah. They, they must be running out of things to be outraged by. <laughs> yeah, they would have to be <clears throat> to get mad at like a joke from 2008 Family Guy. Jesus. Okay, that's good enough. Mr. Enter has better takes than Twitter. Did what did Mr. Enter make a video defending Quagmire? Because I gotta see that. Brian deserves to be canceled more. I mean, I don't know if Brian is like a, a canonical rapist. I'm just not mad because it's a cartoon character. It's not real. It's it's a fucking joke. Uh, and it looks like this uh, Quagmire thing it has 85 pathetic points, which wow. makes it tied. With prankster influencers is the number really? one thing on the list, Biggs. Dang. I'm going to type th this long title in yet again. <laughs> <laughs> you could just copy and paste I it. I could, but... but it looked stupid last time. <laughs> okay. We're almost there. <clears throat> almost there. So, Biggs, I guess, uh, you know... We might be tied right now for things that we put on the list having a top spot, but technically the thing I put on today scored higher than anything you put on today. So True. I win. So I'm, you win the pathetic list today? I win the pathetic list today. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll bring some bigger guns next time. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even tell you <clears throat> that we were doing pathetic lists until five minutes before the show. You still thought we were <laughs> going to do guespionage. So <clears throat> really did not give you any prep time. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of typical. I probably wouldn't prep anyways. <laughs> uh, we are 45 minutes in. I was hoping to start this closer to the halfway mark, but fuck it, we can fly through. Biggs, the next segment for today's episode is... And uh, we can just keep this paper up, actually. I'm going to scroll this bad boy down. Uh, Biggs, is, I think we are overdue for a survivor simulator. For those who don't know, every now and then, me and Biggs, or maybe it's me and some other people... We, uh, we put together a bunch of our favorite characters from various things, and we do a survivor simulator, usually a semi-small hit on the channel. And I don't want us to do this next week, because next week we're going to have Eggy, and we have to review the, the Life movie, the Jake Gyllenhaal Life movie. But the week after that, we are going to do the survivor simulator, and today I want us to do a, a bit of a schoolyard pick, Biggs, a bit of a draft for who we want on our tribes. Uh, we both are the, you know, the tribe captains, so we both need to choose nine characters to join us. And I think it should only be things that we have talked about 
on Mumkey and Biggs 365. How does that sound? Yeah. And it looks that like you, ha- you have a suggestion. Yup, says a low res. Biggs Survivor Simulator is dream for me. So maybe he wants you to put low res on the tribe, but I don't think you know low res. I don't think so. And uh, Beppis Me Colton says they won't air an early Adam Sandler canteen boy SNL skit because it was too molesty. I have it on Adam Sandler's SNL Best Hits DVD, though. So shout out to the molesty skit. Uh, but Biggs, I, I think we should have some stakes here because we're both going to have a tribe of 10. Going, like ribeyes or sirloins? Well, that we might literally, that might be the prize. That's my whole point is that whoever wins, whoever has one of their tribe members go on to win the simulator should win a prize. And if you want to make it like a ribeye steak, we can talk about that. But I had something else in mind. Yeah, I mean, I'm down for winner getting a steak dinner provided by the other person. You don't even want to hear my much better suggestion that will save me $20. Sure, what's your much much better suggestion? <laughs> and this might not mean much to you, but maybe it will. I don't know. All I know is I don't want to hear what the audience has to say. I only want to hear what you have to say about this. What if the winner gets... 20 pathetic points taken off their score on the pathetic list. So, Biggs, you could hypothetically be down to seven. You'd be at the very, very bottom. <laughs> See, I would still be in the 50s, I, you know, but at least I could go. Because winning Survivor, winning a Survivor draft is not pathetic. If anything, that earns you enough respect to go down on the list. What do you think? <laughs> wow, that, um... Hmm... What if we, well, no, that wouldn't really make sense. I don't know. I feel like changing your pathetic list score is kind of. But you've already put me on the list so many other times. Like you'll always have co-hosts who lie about guespionage. I'll always have 77 points there. But Monkey Jones could go from 74 to 54, hypothetically, 50-50 chance. It's only fair. (laughs) That suggestion is pathetic. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's what I was getting at. But uh, should we raise the stakes even more? Uh And loser gains 20 points. (laughs) (laughs) Both or just one? Both. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, Biggs, even if I lost 20 and you gained 20, I would still be above you. I'm like 50 ahead of you. <laughs> so I would, hypothetically, I would have 94 points and you'd have seven if you won. It's Kalen says, when I changed my pathetic with school. Oh, no, he's got baby monkey. <laughs> That's the emoji. I got to take that emoji out now. <laughs> Uh, Biggs, it's up to you. We can do the the gain and lose 20, or we can do the steak dinner. I'll let you decide so I don't seem as pathetic. I I thought it would be fun, okay? (laughs) We can put it up to a vote if you want. I I already said I don't care what these people have to say. (laughs) I know what they're going to vote for. Um, I'm fine with the the plus and minus 20. That's funny. It it would be funny if I was... I mean, I'd be the new top of the list if I lose. These are some high <laughs> fucking stakes. Because nothing nothing will ever get more than 94 points. So... Yeah. Sounds good. Lock it in. Okay, that, we're locked in. Those are the stakes. But now, here's the real fun. We get to draft our teams. And it's going to be, you know, back and forth. If I pick something, Biggs, Biggs can't have it and vice versa. Uh, Biggs, who, who should go first? Should the audience get a pick? Do you want to flip a coin? What are you thinking? Uh, we can just flip a coin. That works. Well, do you have one? Because, you know, I'm kind of broke. Um, one sec. Okay. You're pulling up the the coin flip app on his phone. Well, I was just going to have Google do it. That's fine. Okay, Google. Flip a coin. Landed on tails. We didn't even call it. What are you doing? Oh yeah. <laughs> I, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? You, you Biggs, didn't say anything. Biggs, you can go first. I don't fucking care. Who do you want on your team? We, we both need <laughs> to choose nine people. I forgot we didn't choose heads and tails. Um, <laughs> my first pick is obvious. It's gonna be Jake Jill. Fucking goddamn it! <laughs> I picked tails. I picked tails. I'm going first. Too bad. God damn you! I knew you're gonna. I fucking 
fucking knew it. It's the top of my list. It's the top of my list. Too. Fuck you. <laughs> Jake. Yeah, great. I don't even know how to spell Jill and Hall. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck you, Biggs. You can just put Jake. It's fine. <sighs> okay. Well, <laughs> any explanation needed? We might as well, you know, cover it a little bit. Why? When have we ever talked about Jake Gyllenhaal on this show? That's true. I mean, maybe we haven't talked about him on this show at all, have we? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> you just about made snot come out of my nose. <laughs> Okay, what my... else is there to say? I've been I've been slobbering over Jake since I watched Donnie the first time. So that's fair. Uh, well, since we have reviewed a few Jake movies, I've got a few characters from those movies on my potential list. So if you're taking Jake round one, I'm gonna have to go with the Boston Bomber from uh, the movie Stronger. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He gets in and gets out. He does what he needs to do. He goes on the run for a little bit. And, uh, you know, I think he'll be crafty enough to help me out on the tribe. Fair enough. Okay. Who's your next pick, Biggs? My next pick is the Indian ship captains. That was, also, how... that was also on my potential list. <laughs> they know how to wreak havoc, so maybe they can do it for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, give a little bit more of a, a brief recap so everybody knows why you love these people so much. Uh, basically, and I still don't know, like, all the details on the story. I'm going off of what I initially heard, and that's fine. Uh, apparently these ship captains were just really dumb and somehow lost power of their ship and careened directly into a bridge, taking it out, killing, like, 20 people. I, I still don't understand how that happens. Okay. But maybe they can kill it for me in this game. If anything, they, I mean, if they know how to pilot a ship, might help you go fishing a little bit on Survivor, so anything can happen. And they're used to shitting outside, so they'll, they'll be a, a natural environment for them. Uh, you know what? I'm doing it. Uh, Biggs' cat, Chai, is going on my list. She always likes to pop up and hang out with Biggs in the background. I know he would steal one of my cats if they dared show their face on this show. Although I think maybe Shoji did in episode one, but... <laughs> Well, that's funny you say that. But Biggs' cat, Chai, will betray him and hopefully help me lose 20 pathetic points. Who you got that next, be, Biggs? That would be pretty sad. Uh, my next up on the list is Shoji. <laughs> Whatever. He wasn't even on my list. You can have him. Wow. Baby Shoji doesn't deserve the hate. He, he's my favorite cat. <laughs> Don't tell Blaze. He'll be pissed. Okay, so we but we, we we put both of uh, the other guys' cat on our tribe. Okay, my next one. Uh, while you know what, I, I like to have a, a tribe of villains. The villains tribe from Heroes vs. Villains is the all-time best Survivor tribe. And there's my tribe mate Chai right behind you right now. Uh, from another Jake Gyllenhaal movie, I'm going with uh, the Zodiac Killer. How about that, Biggs? The Zodiac Killer. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think him they're in the pretty bo- methodical and can really uh, outthink the he, opponent. He never got caught. Like he is the perfect survivor winner because he's True. a sociopath. He's crafty, strategic. He gets away with shit. And I think him and the boss and bomber would be a good duo. I think they'll have an alliance. Yeah. Okay, Biggs, who's your tribe bait number five out of ten? Uh, so I also went with a a. Uh... You know, a good thinker. Uh, what did I just say? A good thinker is what I meant to say. Okay. Somebody who's really methodical and and good at uh, strategy and whatnot. I'm gonna go with Florian. Uh, he was an option on my list as well. Okay. Why do you want Florian? Because he he's an eccentric a millionaire. He calls everybody his friend. Yeah. Or maybe that was a Chat GPT version of him. Oh, it did get brighter in here. You can see Chai better now. See, that's I'm going to talk cat. her into losing on purpose. No, nah, she's going to help me out. She'll help me catch the mice <clears> and shit and everything. Uh, so why do you want Florian on your tribe, though? What's he going what, to contribute? Because he seems like more of a liability. Like I said, he's a critical thinker and a strategist. I think he could pull it out. I guess if you're sitting at the end with Florian, it would be good to say, hey, jury, who's about to vote for the winner, listen, this dude's already a millionaire, and he's very rude and nasty. You know, I need the money more than him. Vote for me. 
That's true. One of my other contestants could use him as a goat. Yeah, I'm guessing that will be his fate. Well, you know, if we're doing heroes and villains, then <clears throat> you got all these heroes like Jake Gyllenhaal, Indian ship captain, Florian. I might as well get the 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 Yang to his yin and put Aggy on my tribe. <laughs> Oh, man. Imagine if they actually, like, argue and go at it in the game. Imagine if uh, at the merge they team up and then it's the final two of Aggie and Florian. Ugh. That'd be real cinema. But Aggie, he, he's a natural survivalist. He can put up with anything. He can eat anything. Survivor often has challenges where they have to eat nasty food. I think he would win those for our tribe. But no fucking problem. He was trained to do that. Uh, and he's, uh, he's a loyal, trustworthy friend. What else could you need? Okay, Biggs, we're halfway through our list. Who do you got next? Well, every tribe needs some brawn on their, on their team. So my next pick is Joseph Joestar. I think okay. he, he can, he can carry us through those physical challenges and, uh, wipe the floor with your team. How do you spell Joestar? It's J-O-E-S-T-A-R. Okay, and I'm glad you brought in Joseph Joestar because I was literally about to say Dio. No way. This Dio the Dio. Vampire. Heroes versus Boots. <laughs> I, I had Dio on my list and no other JoJo characters. That's the only one I wanted. Uh, Dio, of course, is the villain of, I guess, well, only like the first seven episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, he yeah. gets he gets a, a mask that gives him vampire powers and he dies like five times and keeps coming back somehow and it's annoying as fuck but it'll be good in this game you know you might defeat him in every challenge but he somehow revives himself despite anything that happens to him he perseveres and he's very powerful i think he is objectively stronger than joseph joestar well but is joseph the I, the new one or the old one the new one uh, the, the new one's probably stronger okay i'll, <laughs> I'll give him that one uh who's your next pick biggs uh, so with every tribe, you need a, a morale booster, right? You need somebody that's going to keep everyone happy and, you know, laugh and give them good support. My next pick is Randy, the wild horse. <laughs> hey, he, you know, he's loyal to me. He's not going to go on your tribe. No, he definitely will. Uh -oh, he fucked this one up. Else but Randy. Uh, Randy, of course, moderator in the chat for this show. We have not had him as a guest yet. I don't believe so. Maybe... Uh, maybe he can join us for the next JoJo review. How's that sound, Randy? <laughs> uh, have you watched a lot of Randy's videos? I've watched some of his streams with you guys, and I've seen some of his, his videos, yeah. He's a real food connoisseur. So, yeah. But that's not, that's not a good thing, Biggs, because if you guys win some sort of reward with food, I think Randy's going to start diving in so he can review it all, and he's going to eat all the, all the food. <laughs> It's well, a bad that could be, could be a potential issues, but you know, he, he's also into team building too. He really likes to, uh, you know, get people hyped up and chat. So he's very supportive. He's, he tells everybody like he really demands that people share the stream on social media, which I never yeah. asked. I never asked him to do that. <laughs> and I'd almost prefer that nobody share this and that we keep this <laughs> as an insulated little fan base. Cause I don't, I don't need to know what the, the masses think about what we're doing here. So the good choice with Randy. Has he had a... He says, I will. I don't know what he's responding to specifically, but it sounds like I he's on he's, board. I think uh, he said, I will, in response to you saying he'll jump in and eat all the food to review. Oh, okay. Okay. You picked Randy for number seven. Who should I go with next? <clears throat> and there's a lot of overlap, so I'm going to have to think on the fly pretty soon. Um, how about to go with Dio... How about a character that I've brought in many times? A character who wanted to know. Dio, can you hear me? I am lost and so alone. I'm asking for your guidance. Won't you come down from your throne? I need a tight compadre who will teach me how to rock. My father thinks you're evil, but man, he can suck a cock. Biggs, do you know what this character is called? No. So it's uh, it's Child Jack Black from the movie Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. And his character is literally named JB, which is just Jack Black. It's just his initials. So I, I think the character is just uh, 
child Jack Black from that movie is who I'm putting on my tribe. Fair enough. Okay. And I, I will have to sing that song every time Dio and JB interact. Uh, Biggs, we have three left each, so make them count. Who's your number eight? Well, since people are starting to say in chat and I don't want it to get stolen, my next pick is OJ Simpson. We've never talked about him on this show, Biggs. We did at the beginning of this episode. Did we? God damn it. (laughs) What did we say? What did we say about him? I even said rip OJ in chat. (laughs) The the chat doesn't count. If the manga of Death Note doesn't count, Biggs, the things you say in the chat before the show don't fucking count. (laughs) But what about uh, when uh, when O.J. Simpson walked in and, and saw Marge and Quagmire, huh? And Quagmire killed him. <laughs> do you have any justification? Why do you want a dead black man on your tribe, Biggs? It just seems rude. You're going to bring uh, him back with necromancy? You know, he's willing to uh, do some things that not be... Might not be morally right to get what he wants, you know? Well, speaking of which, my next choice is Dan Schneider. (laughs) 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 He's he's a man who knows what he wants and he gets it. (laughs) He goes for it. He he wants to see a 12-year-old's feet. He'll fucking, not only will he get to see it, he gets to film it and put it on television for millions of viewers. Okay. And just because Nostalgia Biggs spent a whole episode shitting on Dan Schneider doesn't mean he's necessarily a bad man. You can say he got Amanda Bynes and Zoe 101 pregnant all you want. Show me the baby. If that baby is not a big fat fuck, you have no proof. (laughs) So I think Dan Schneider, he's going to entertain us At, at the... He might be a lot of things, but at the very least, he's he's a comedian. He's got a good head on his shoulders for comedy. He will keep us entertained around the campfire. And if if we have any goo that needs to be squirted onto a child's face, I'm sure he can provide. Just like he did to Zo- Zoe 101. And the fucked up thing about that documentary, the Nickelodeon one, is that they're saying, isn't it so bad that they did a cum shot joke to this child? And then they show it. Like eight times in the documentary. Like, my fucking God. Yeah, over and over like, and over. When I reviewed the Cuties movie, I made sure to not show any images or footage because that's, if you're outraged by it existing, why are you showing it to everybody? For fuck's sake. Like, isn't yeah, it disgusting it, that he did this joke? Watch it eight times in a row. And also, it's not like. You know, you have to show it as proof. Like everyone that that watches that documentary, for the most part, has seen the show itself already, and they know what they're talking about. Or we can just take their word for it. Like, if you're talking about child abuse, you don't have to show the abuse, do you? But whatever. Yeah. We're, we're, I'll talk to Dan about that on the island. Okay, we'll get to that. Biggs, who's your number nine? Uh. Well, there's no other explanation other than every tribe needs at least one woman. Uh, my next pick is Patchy's wife. Has she been on this show? We've talked about her before in chat. Okay. Not even your own wife who made her first physical appearance in this episode. You'd, you'd rather have my brother's wife than your own. Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, <laughs> Mrs. Biggs, uh, she has a love-hate relationship with... The survivor, and it kind of makes mm. me sad. And I don't know if she would enjoy being out there on the island. So, what's her shitty opinion about Survivor? Uh, she just thinks the the contestants are too stupid, and she hates watching their stupid decisions unfold. I guess. Okay, my number nine pick, Biggs, and I don't know this person's name. You're going to have to tell me a name, but it's. Uh, Biggs's obese diabetic co-worker who medically required McDonald's. You His this? name was also Dan. Oh, no. I well, Dan's on Survivor. Don't usually have a good ending. So maybe I... Well, here, you can change it because... Uh, diabetic Dan? It wasn't... Or no, sorry. His name wasn't Dan. That guy's name was Kevin. Diabetic sorry, I Kevin? My, I got my obese uh, <laughs> co-workers mixed up that had... Uh, yeah, diabetes. 
Can you uh, summarize the story real quick for anybody who missed that episode? Uh, TLDR, this guy had diabetes and didn't tell anyone about it until we were like way out in the middle of nowhere and decided to scream at us for not providing him McDonald's because that's what his diabetes required to not kill him. (laughs) Yeah, not like an EpiPen or whatever the fuck. He specifically medically needed a McDonald's to save his life. And, yeah. he, and, he, and he was going to yell at Biggs about it. Okay, Biggs, your last pick, the final member of your tribe. This might be the one who wins it for you and, and loses you those 20 pathetic points. Uh, my last pick is the man from the Rice Krispies commercial. Okay. he. I think we've done him in, in these simulators before, but it's a good pick. We have, and he's done decently well, if I remember right. So I'm hoping he'll bring it back and... You know, along with the others, bring in that W for me. Now, if I'm doing the villain tribe, should I, like, do I have to pick mother-in-law now? <laughs> mother-in-law? You could. She's also been in previous Survivor yeah. things. I think I'm going to keep it a little unique. And you know what? If you've got Patchy's wife, I should choose the love of her life. That's right. Feast and Frank. Hell- <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Feast and Frank wins. That'd be so bogus. <laughs> it's just you holding a Wendy's burger. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I guess Jimmy won. <laughs> fucked Biggs. Unbelievable. Okay, if you don't know, we did a short film called Taste of Defeat, and Biggs's character was uh, the rival YouTuber to Iggy's character who ended up stealing his girlfriend slash wife, and his name was Feast and Frank. If, if you've seen the intro of Biggs eating the burger... That's that's Feast and Frank. That's not even Biggs. True. Uh, Mayo on the lip and everything. I I would like, uh, you know, people in the chat are saying who they think will win, and I like that. So uh, keep it going. We've got uh, It's Kalen says Feast and Frank is my pick. Uh, Shuba's disappointed there's no Greb and Greg, but I do have Eggy on my team. I did not want, you know, two egg gentlemen. Might as well mix it up a little bit. True. Feasting Frank is an absolute chad. Yeah, I mean, you can't really say anything bad about him. He's got like 4 million subscribers. He, he loves what he does. He's in a happy relationship. Really, it's just uh, uh, Grub and Greg's jealousy so, that, that paints him in a negative light. So maybe we should uh, resolve the OJ thing and let me swap the OJ pick. For who? Vincent the Atheist. We haven't talked about him on here. Yeah, we have. No. We've talked about Vincent before. Not on 365. Not on 3... Okay. Well, then when did we ever talk about... Um... Oh, I've okay, got receipts, fair. buddy. I did. got receipts. Go for it. That's Which fair. one? We probably did. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you think... Uh, I mean, I think I've got a, a good lineup of Dio, Child, Jack Black, and Dan Schneider. Like, the interactions between those three could be beautiful. What is Dan going to do with this child? Does this child know that this is the wrong Dio that he's singing to? So many possibilities here. A lot of questions. Yeah, it's not child Justin Bieber. It's uh, <laughs> the character from Tenacious D in the opening song. Uh, All my money is on diabetic Kevin. Uh, Biggs, would you like to send me a photo of somebody who looks like this man that I can put into the simulator? <sighs> Oh, man. You know, to be honest, he almost looks exactly like Harvey Weinstein. Like, no joke. Which is exactly what the guy who got kicked off a survivor named Dan looked like as well. That's funny. Hmm. I think he's going to get find, I'll, removed I'll in Final Five. I'll find a good five. picture. I'll, just, yeah, I'll grab picture a picture of the Dan from Survivor who got kicked off because he looks like Weinstein as well. So Fair enough. That works. Uh... Okay, well, Biggs, I think that's another Monkey and Biggs. Well, Biggs did. Uh, what did we say the title for this episode was? Too many words, retard or, or something? Or <laughs> That's only five <laughs> words. Or that's only four <laughs> words, retard, I think. Should I stick with the current title of, uh, what is it? Monkey and large friend having a gay conversation. Does that fit better? Because this was kind of gay. Yeah, that's fitting. It's moderately homosexual. Did you hear that Florian came out as bi? Really? Yeah, on uh, the Bazinga Boys <clears throat> podcast, uh, every week, the opening segment is he updates us on his grinder dates. He's on grinder now. And you put him on your tribe, so have fun with that. 
hey, I'm more politically correct than you are. And diverse, apparently. Nothing to be proud of, Biggs. Who would have thought Biggs would be the uh, the the PC group? So true. I mean, you only dropped the word tranny three times this episode. <laughs> hey, it's a, it's a word to describe him. Really. <laughs> it is a word to describe him. <laughs> Man, there's this guy I used to work with. Uh, he always made this stupid joke all the time because he, he worked on, like, classic cars or something like that. So he thought it would be funny to walk up to people and be like, hey, man, did you know, like, in my garage at home, I got a hangi- or a tranny hanging in there? And <laughs> they were like, okay, cool. What did he He's mean like, by that? Like he a had, like, a transmission. Oh, okay. Like a transmission from a car hanging. He's like, yeah, I hang trannies in my in my garage. <laughs> in my spare time, I love hanging them. Yeah. He thought it was so funny. He would say it all the time. Even well, to of like... course, that's what we're talking about when we say that word, just in case anybody's curious. We're yeah, always talking vehicle about transmissions. Yeah, transmissions. I fucking hate transmissions so much, dude. <laughs> yeah. They're ruining society. <laughs> True. Oh, man. Man, if only uh, transmissions could leave children alone. <laughs> I can't believe the Digibro quit reviewing anime to become a transmission. <laughs> okay, we should probably end it there. <laughs> yeah. Four Monkey and Biggs this week. I've been Monkey. I've been Monkey as well. We'll see you next week with Aggie and a new Jake Gyllenhaal movie. We're going to spin the wheel of Jake. Find out what we're going to do in the month after. Uh, bye, folks. See ya. Salutations, dear viewer!